yesterday. Drupalcon news? Yeah, I said the Drupal 7 has been extended yes. for a long time. We will get to that. Yeah, I figured you would when I saw that. <laughs> Drupalcon. I figured that's where it was announced. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Contrib Half Hour. It is our second meeting of June 2023. And today we're going to have a bit of a look at some news from DrupalCon 2023 that just, or actually is going on this week in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So my name is Damien McKenna. I've been involved in Drupal since 2007, do a bunch of stuff, but people recognize me as that guy with one ears who hops around the, the issue queues. My time is sponsored by Media Current. We're an open source product agency and our commitment to open source goes beyond software. Uh, several of my coworkers are currently at, are coming back from DrupalCon. Um, so, uh, the schedule for the next few weeks is open. If there's a topic you'd like us to look into, do post some ideas in the planning session or planning issue. Um, I do need to continue the Drupal 7 upgrade series and the uh, module and contrib fixes and stuff. But if there's something specific you'd like us to look at, please do post a comment and we'll try and take a look at it. Also, I need to follow up on the CK editor stuff because that one is complicated. All right. So news from around the Drupal sphere, no security updates this week. It's DrupalCon week. It's a policy to not release security updates unless something happens outside of the security team's control, like some super de duper uh, security update for a dependency that is specifically locked down in some way, yada, yada. Basically, if it's within our control, there won't be any security updates the week of DrupalCon. So nothing currently planned. Uh, for Drupal core releases, there was a bug fix release of Drupal 7. So we're up to 7.98. Wonder if they'll hit three digits. I'm sure they will given security updates and stuff. Um, but there haven't been any updates to Drupal 9 or 10 in a number of weeks. And we're eagerly awaiting the final 10.1.0 this week. I'm sure the core maintainers are busily working on it at the moment, trying to get it all uh, trimmed and ready for release. A couple of interesting uh, code updates on Drupal core from the list changes page that actually affect Drupal 7 rather than the usual Drupal 9 and 10. So in the new 7.98 release are four or five changes. I think there was one more I didn't include because it was a little uh, too esoteric, but some uh, nice small little improvements. One of them is that the PHP info page can now be configured so you can control how much information is shown. So for example, you could uh, I believe hide some pieces that might divulge security related information if you wanted to uh, block admins from being able to see that. There's also a change in how session IDs are stored in the database. You can disable this option with a settings.php line. So take a look at the release notes for details. They've also finally, finally, uh, fixed how Drupal core requests the update info for its list of available updates. That was, has long been one of those 
uh, unusual man in the middle attacks that uh, needed to be fixed, but for various reasons, it took an awful long time to get that fixed. So it's finally fixed in Drupal 7. And again, if you check the release notes, it's configurable. And lastly, they've added a some logic to the form system to prevent double accidental double clicks. You know the thing where um, people will accidentally, uh, sometimes accidentally, sometimes because they don't know better, click twice on a submit button. Um, a lot of sites have manually added some JavaScript to prevent this, but now there's something in Drupal core itself to prevent that. And again, this can be disabled if it, you find it is causing problems on your site. So uh, do check the release notes and do, uh, do some uh, solid testing on your site to make sure that there aren't any regressions from all of those. Uh, as for upcoming events, Drupal Camp Asheville is in July. A couple of dev days in, is in August. I'm sure there are many other events on uh, check out. I forgot to post that URL. Um, I think it's drupal.org slash community slash events for the event calendar. Anything anybody want to share before we get into the big stories this week? All right, uh, so let's get into it. So a couple of uh, things this week. Um, from DrupalCon, uh, from the Dries Note and some other bits and pieces. So uh, as folks who have watched the videos or joined us before will know, Drupal 11 has been slated for the end of 2024. And that is part of a multi-year plan to set a kind of regular, planable uh, rhythm to how the releases are done for the, the major releases. Um, and so far, the plans for major releases for Drupal have worked out fairly well uh, from the uh, object-oriented rewrite of Drupal 8 and then the semantic versioning plan that led to a relatively seamless upgrade to Drupal 9 and then Drupal 10. Uh, I'm excited to see this continue. Um, the Bigger news, maybe, is that Drupal 7 has finally kind of come to a solid final uh, trajectory, I guess, for its end of life. That uh, the previously planned rolling six month extensions has been uh, done away with. And the plan is now that it is going to have a 14 month extension. So it's getting another thing that makes it 16 months, sorry, 18 months of support. And a, all support for Drupal 7 will end on January 5th, 2025. Um, along with that, there are also some security support changes in how, uh, what is going to be considered for a private security update or security fix versus a public security fix. And there are some other related changes. Um, the full details are at drupal.org slash PSA dash 2023 dash 06 07. And any organization that still has a Drupal 7 site really needs to uh, review this and uh, 
come up with plans on what to do in the next 18 months. Um, it is no, it's worth noting that there are kind of two phases to this. Uh, the first phase is actually going to be as of August 1st. Uh, so in, what was that? Seven, eight weeks. As of August 1st, there are going to be a couple of changes. First of all, as of that point, all future releases of Drupal 7 are going to require PHP 5.6. So if you have an older version of PHP, unfortunately, you're going to start running into uh, some difficulties with potentially running into uh, difficulties with updates. Um, there are not a huge number of changes between PHP 5.3 and 5.6, but there are a few regarding syntax, code syntax. And what they're saying is basically at that point, they're not going to worry about uh, making sure the code syntax is compatible with PHP uh, versions older than 5.6. Um, doesn't happen very often that issues sneak in, but uh, one of the more notable changes is the short array syntax that was added in, I think, 5.4. So as of August, it is basically A-OK -okay that Drupal core could have short array syntax code included. Um, and that would break sites still running older versions of PHP. Um, they've also decided they're not going to be doing any more package distributions. Uh, the distribution system has kind of uh, reached its end of life anyway. With the composer world, it kind of no longer makes sense to do a distribution that is packaged up and downloadable from Drupal.org for uh, updating or managing existing sites. Uh, in my experience, there are just too many problems tying a code base to a distribution. Uh, while the distribution is great for a kickstart thing to get your site started with, um, I really feel that once you have your site started and you're building it, uh, you should have 100% control over the entire code base and not be limited by a distribution. So uh, I completely understand uh, they're wanting to uh, finally stop that. Um, there are also changes in how contrib maintainership will work for Drupal 7 modules and themes. Um, again, full details are in the PSA, but the short version is that if a project loses support because, or loses, um, or is marked as unsupported because it is, uh, it has a security update and the maintainers, existing maintainers, don't do the due diligence to either fix it or find somebody else to take it over to fix it, then that branch, that release of the contrib project will be marked as unsupported and it will no longer be possible to add maintainers to maintain that branch. Um, there are lots of minutiae involved in this one, so I don't know how some of the uh, implications are going to shake out. Or are they going to block right access to any branch that starts with 7.x? So if an existing maintainer decides to pick up uh, the mantle after a break, are they going to be able to write to the repository? Uh, there are lots of details to work out. Um, but what it means is any project, any organization that is de heavily dependent on the Drupal 7 
module or theme um, needs to take a look at whether those projects are still being maintained and supported. And if not, if they don't have a plan on upgrading to Drupal 10 plus already, they should uh, see about uh, having some staff step up to maintain those projects to keep them, uh, keep the lights on for those projects for the next 18 months. Um, or hire somebody else to do that for them. But either which way, it's getting to a point where uh, people need to either step up to help maintain the Drupal 7 ecosystem or uh, get their sites upgraded to the latest. Um, actually, there is one other thing related to that whole thing I forgot to include. Um, and I'm not sure where it is. Okay, here it is. Um, so that mastermind of useful ideas and tools, uh, Matt Glemon came up with a project that you can add to your Drupal 10 site via Composer that works as a compatibility layer for Drupal 7 modules. It's not going to work on a theme. It is for modules and it provides some limited support for running Drupal 7 uh, APIs on a Drupal 10 site. And the idea is to reduce the amount of code you need to rewrite to make a Drupal 7 module run on Drupal 10. It's limited and it's not going to cover every scenario and it, it's not going to be possible to cover every possible scenario and provide 100% compatibility. However, it might work for some smaller modules that are relatively straightforward um, and help you help sites uh, reduce the amount of work that needs to be done up front. So right now, it provides compatibility for the menu system, for the permission system, for forms and blocks. And based on my experience, that covers quite a lot of custom code that sites that people built for Drupal 7 sites over the years uh, for uh, many, many basic scenarios without getting into lots of custom APIs, hook node, this, that, and the other. Uh, there's an awful lot that will simplify. Um, and the idea is that having that bit done automatically and you just, you don't touch that part of your code base, it then gives you a stepping stone to then get your module modules running on Drupal 10 plus and uh, lets you focus on the harder pieces and this kind of minutia of basic menus, basic permissions, uh, block generation and form generation gives you a way of uh, um, reducing the amount of work you need to do so that like I said, you can then focus on the more custom stuff rather than this kind of boilerplate type stuff. Um, it's a huge uh, improvement or a huge boon to projects that are trying to work out their upgrade path. Um, 
and uh, a huge thanks to Matt Glamon for building yet another what I think will be essential tool for sites that are still running on Drupal 7. Um, so thank you, Matt, for that. Um, and as always, he has added his project somewhere. Do, 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 do. Retrofit. Uh, it's on GitHub and you can take a look at it there and see if there's ways of improving it. If you have ideas, please join in the issue queue there. Uh, create pull requests if you think you can uh, do that, if there are things you'd like to specifically improve on it. But uh, I think this is going to be a great, great help for a site still running on Drupal 7. So, all right, so that's Drupal 7. So as a reminder, Drupal 7's end of life is now January 5th, 2025. You have 18 months to finish getting your sites onto Drupal 10 and above. Um, if you haven't already, now might be a good time to start or at least start planning it. Um, so I was hoping we might have had some folks who were at DrupalCon or had attended the first couple of days of DrupalCon to join us, but they appear to still be at DrupalCon, drupling it up. Um, I was hoping to hear from folks on what, how it was all going and everything. Um, but. Let me see. Um, so Adrian, have you heard any other news that I might've missed? Uh, no real news. Bob said, was excited because he's sitting in, they're doing, uh, doing contrib today and he's doing uh, Drupal recipes. Oh, cool. Something we've been struggling with for several months to try to get our hands on. And I was finally able to get the example working a couple of days ago and I got a simple recipe done yesterday and today I'm going to try to do a more complex one. Triple recipes. So recipes and distrib distributions and recipes I think is what the, because there's several that are, are in that area. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's um, distributions and recipes. Distributions and recipes. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That's excellent. Um, yeah, this is uh, kind of the follow on on the discussion of uh, retiring distributions as a thing. The idea is yeah. recipes would be a replacement for that, where you kind of have a starter kit that you run a, com a composer command and you. Uh, build kind of an initial install. And then at that point, you have full control over everything yeah. rather than being tied to this uh, third party code base that may or may not be maintained. Right. Uh, so exciting to see that uh, take shape. Um, there are a number of pieces that they're trying to do on it. Um, excuse me. Um, but I definitely think it's the way to go for that whole ecosystem as a whole. Yeah. Um, their distribution like things are fantastic for getting a site going because you don't you don't have to rebuild what an article looks like each time or a product or a picketing um, that the problem comes in with uh, ongoing maintenance where you want to have full control over everything, but you may not be able to with a distribution that is tied to a different organization's view of what this thing should be. So 
Uh, yes, I, I ran into issues when I first started with Drupal with distributions, not understanding the prop bit about it being maintained by a third party instead of me. And then I ended yeah. up with all kinds of problems with double modules and all types of other stuff. Yeah. It just it ended up being a rough definitely mess. Gets, <laughs> yeah. Definitely can get complicated. Yeah. Um, it's a little easier in a composer world, but you still have those third party dependency problems where, well, I don't need this piece anymore, but I can't update that other one because this piece is locked to an out of date version or something. Yeah. Um, so nice. Good on you, Bob. Good on you. Yeah. So you can get to show me when he gets back. <laughs> awesome. Unless I already figure it out on my own, we'll see. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, Thanks. I'll need it. I mean, I've been needing it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I have not looked at the latest recipes system, but I, my understanding is that they want to have it kind of open ended that you could add recipes to an existing site as well. Uh, so it, it's kind of a canned way of adding configuration. Um, so we'll see. Um, yeah. My hope is that they get some uh, documentation done because that's been the main problem I've had with it is that there's very little documentation. They have it all there, but no instructions on how to put it all together. Ah. Yeah, that is often the uh, the issue. Um, yeah. It's easier to make time to do a thing than it is to make time to document what the thing does or how to use it. Yeah. Um, so, well, good luck trying to get all of that working. Maybe we'll. Um, have to take a look at this at a future meeting and ask Bob for some insights. I'm sure it's probably going to be a topic at our meetup in a month or so. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, well, let's let me add a quick note on this slide. Ask Bob about recipes. Yeah. Uh -huh. You should All be right. the, exper the expert now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Look forward to it. All right. Well, let's leave it there for this week. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back again next week. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, have a fantastic week. Thank you. Okay. You too. Take care.